Hello, everybody. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And yesterday, I think the most searched term on Google was substance painter alternatives. I don't know why. It's just kind of strangely out of the blue. A lot of people are looking for an alternative to substance painter and substance designer, actually. And that's what I'm looking at today. What programs out there provide the same kind of functionality as substance painter and substance designer? Mostly painter, to be honest. And the truth of the matter is, nothing does. There is no direct replacement for substance painter. It is an exceptional program, and it has an exceptional approach to creating textures. Uh, but there are a number of other programs that are also used for creating textures, and that's what we are going to be looking at today. And then at the end, we're going to look at a couple of things about creating materials, which is the process that Substance Designer made. So we'll look at a little bit of both, but mostly at Substance Painter alternatives. Now, Again, you may be asking, well, why? Why is this all coming up? Well, and I've already done a video on it, but Adobe acquired Algorithmic. Algorithmic, of course, makes Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and B2M. And I know a lot of people aren't particularly happy about this move, don't particularly want uh, an Adobe subscription, or they kind of fear for the future of Substance. So a lot of people now are looking at what alternatives there are out there. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at them. Now, of course, I will toss a link with with all of the links down below. Uh, let's start off. First off, the most direct competitor to Substance Painter has always been Quixel Suite, uh, DDO Painter. Now, the only challenge here is that NDO and DDO Painter work inside of Photoshop. So you're not going to get very far ahead if you want to avoid a Creative Cloud license. Uh, but if you're just trying to get something other than Substance Painter, uh, the most direct one-to-one -one comparison is probably Quixel. Now next up, uh, we have 3D Coat. Now 3D Coat is a sculpting and painting and UVing package, also great for retopology. It's about four or five hundred bucks. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. They have a 30 day trial. Uh, I'm actually intending to cover 3D code at some point in time for this particular channel. So stay tuned for that. But if you are looking for a, a program for painting your pro, um, project with about the same or slightly higher price tag of what you're paying with Substance Painter, uh, you can get that and a whole lot more functionality in 3D code. Now, next up we have Armor Paint. Now this one's gonna be the darling among open source projects. Though technically it is not a completely free project, the source code is available. This is built on top of the Armory engine, which in turn is built on the Hacks programming language and the Blender um, DCC. And I've actually done a full tutorial suite on Armory, uh, the game engine. And I did a video in the past on uh, Armor Paint, but I'm gonna actually cover it again, because frankly, this one is getting more and more important. So basically it is creating a textures in a PBR, cap uh, PBR set of textures um, in this painting in a node-based environment. Uh, so you set up your nodes that you're gonna go ahead and paint with. It's still fairly early on, so give Armory Paint a little bit of time to develop. And if you're interested in trying it out though, uh, you can buy it for something like 10 or 15 bucks, or you can actually build it yourself from code as long as you install Armory as well. So next up, we have Mari. Now let's start with the first way to describe Mari. Mari is expensive. Mari is two grand US to start. And Mari is kind of a different approach to it. It also is for very, very high res textures. We're talking, um, I think 32K by 32K. A lot of this is for uh, movie pipeline and so on. Uh, but if you are looking for a high end replacement and you have two grand to spend, do check out Mari from Foundry. Now you may recognize the name Foundry. They make other products such as Modo and Nuke. So they're a big player in the motion picture space, which hopefully can make it so that it's harder and harder for someone like say, I don't know, Adobe to buy them in the future. But again, there's a huge price tag attached to Mari. We're talking again, two grand right there. Next up we have Paint Cube. Now Paint Cube, I haven't played around with too much. I'm gonna play around with it and follow it up with a video. But this is a 3D painting software, but it runs entirely in, uh, I believe Chrome is the only really supported browser, but you can basically do painting directly on 3D models using custom materials and over cross layers, but in the browser. And the pricing structure on this one is you can try it out completely free. Uh, there is a um, 
monthly fee of seven bucks if you want to have, what is the difference? Oh, okay, so that's a 14 day trial. So it's $7 a month or 50 bucks a year past that initial trial. Now again, I haven't given this guy a whole lot of hands-on time. I'm gonna check it out and I will get back to you guys with a video in the future, but uh, definitely a cheaper option. But again, you're not even come close to the functionality that is currently provided by Substance Painter, but maybe eventually we will. Now next up, we have Body Paint 3D. Now Body Paint 3D confuses me a little bit, to be honest. I'm not 100% sure exactly what this is relative to Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D SKUs are incredibly confusing. Uh, they make their base version, their this version, their that version, and then they make a 3D um, body paint 3D version. And the way it goes, basically Body Paint 3D is the 3D painting module for Cinema 4D, but it also contains the base functionality of Cinema 4D, so if you buy it, you get some of the functionality from Cinema 4D. I'm not exactly sure where the lines end and where this is an extension for Cinema 4D or if this is a stripped down version of Cinema 4D with painting capabilities. But suffice to say, this is another painting application. Now it costs a grand, so it is by no means uh, completely free. But you'll see, especially if you look at the, the release 20, that's when they move towards a node-based architecture, kind of similar to what you're working with uh, when dealing with uh, substance painter plus they've got some you know algorithmic stuff and this is a probably as close as we get to like the particle painting that you see inside of uh, substance painter now there is a trial available so if you want to check it out you can so this is a bit of both a painter and a plug-in for Cinema 4D and a stripped-down version of Cinema 4D with painting features and functionalities. And again, it's about a thousand bucks, so that, that part kind of hurts. Next up, we're going into the Substance Designer side of things. Now, Substance Designer, so Substance Painter is used for drawing texture maps. Substance Designer is for creating materials that you would then in turn use to draw texture maps, if that distinction makes sense. And we've got Neo Texture Edit to start with. This is a procedural texture editor. Uh, it is open source and free, which is definitely cool. So it's worth checking out. And you build materials using a node of networks. If you used any shader program, uh, such as uh, the shader editor built into Unity or um, uh, Unreal Engine, you got an idea how this works. You connect all these various different nodes together, and then you can use them to create um, more elaborate shaders and materials. Next up, we have Filter Forge. Now, Filter Forge is the same kind of thing. It's been around forever, up to version eight, uh, but it is used for creating filters. But if you look at this, this looks a whole lot like uh, procedural materials or the ultimate output of this result. So definitely worth checking that one out as well. And then finally, we're going back to Quixel again, because Quixel has moved into, Quixel also owns Megascans, which is a huge resource of high, high-end textures. And what they've done here is, um, they've implemented it into something called Mixer, in which you can bring together high-end textures and kind of make new materials out of them. So for example, if I wanted to create a railroad, I could bring together ground, rock, railroad track, and then I have a railroad material. Or you know, I could bring in grime and dust and dirt on top of corrugated metal to create uh, you know, a shipping container type material. So it's a different approach than what Substance Designer works with, but it's probably, again, the closest alternative. So once again, um, Quixel is coming up as, if you wanna move directly from one to the other, Quixel is the closest competitor that Substance had. And a similar pricing. Now again, the challenge here is, once again, that to use Quixel Suite anyways, you need to have Photoshop. So if you're trying to avoid Adobe, it's not the greatest choice. But the mixer is not, it, it, it does not require anything. So if you don't need um, anything other than to generate textures, Quixel Mixer may actually be a great place for you to start next. And then finally, we have doo -doo -doo -doo. Pixaflux, and this is basically a visual node-based sculpting of images. So you can bring in blurs, attributes. Uh, it, it's a little bit different, uh, but definitely can be used to create uh, PBR-based textures and normal maps, filters, and so on. So definitely another one worth checking out. Coincidentally, you can also just go ahead and download it. Uh, so if it's something you want to um, 
try, uh, there's, there's a very short barrier of entry because you can literally just go ahead and download it. So Pixaflux would be the last one to found out my list. Now again, there is no direct replacement for Substance Painter. Unfortunately, there is nothing that does exactly what it does, but hopefully we will see more and more of that coming in the future. Keep an eye on Blender. I believe it's node-based PBR texturing stuff is going to get much better. Also keep an eye on Armory, but I, I proposed a few alternatives to you. Again, nothing is a one-to-one -one replacement, but there are definitely some alternatives out there. They all in turn have their own advantages and disadvantages, often the disadvantage, so for example, Mari or body paint it's the price but um yeah so that is the list those are the alternatives to um substance painter now of course you could just stick with substance painter and hope that adobe doesn't screw it up i think we've got plenty of time uh, you know we're gonna see even if Adobe stops development on it, it's still gonna be a very viable and great product for a couple of years. So the market has a whole lot of time to catch up and improve. But in the meantime, if you do want to jump ship and you are looking for an alternative, these are the best ones I could find. Now, of course, there's a good pos possibility that I completely missed some options. And if I did, please let me know comments down below. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.